What's good? It is I, Ace Trainer Ryan. How y'all doing, man? Um, welcome back for another week of SPC Week 2. Coming off a win. Uh, 1-0 right now, which is pretty hyped. Uh, you know, the slog continues, though, because we got the Chicago Phalanx this week. Uh, new coach. Um, and I think he's pretty good. I think he's pretty good. Um, his team is pretty good, too. So we got Skarm, Spectrier, Roserade, Zygar, Prim... Reuniclus, Scraff, the Wild Effect, Glaceon, and Synthescorch. So I definitely think that I'm not going to have to worry about a lot of these Pokemon, but I'm definitely going to have to worry about a good enough handful. So Skarm is, once again, another Steel Flying type. It really sucks. A uh, huge weakness to my team is I don't have a strong Electric or Fire type. So Steels are kind of uh, a headache, uh, especially Steel Flying's. Um, like, yeah, I got Needle King, but that only gets me so far. Uh, Spectre is going to be uh, a pain because it's fast. Uh, it's basically got Beast Boost, um, Chilling Nay. Uh, it could be Scarfed. It's really fast. It's got 130 base speed. So think of Pokemon like Tapu Koko and Crobat. Uh, we got Roserade, which I think could be a very scary choice Scarf because Roserade has amazing coverage. It moves like Extra Sensory, Dazzling Gleam, Sludge Bomb. Um, but yeah, pretty good Mon there. Uh, you got Zygarde here. Zygarde's very scary. Um, basically because of Thousand Arrows. Um, I think a Dragon Dance is less scary. Like a Dragon Dance variant would be less scary for my team. But I think overall a Choice Bandit variant would actually be super scary. Um, just able to hit me with dual stab thousand arrows and outrage I just don't think my team can handle it well towards the late game next up we have prim now prim arena is really good it's very specially defensive um, it can set up calm mines it can sub um, it can scald burn moon blast uh, water fairy is really good typing in my opinion like super good typing um, I did use Prim Skarm in uh, ASL just a few weeks ago, and I thought the pair were very, very good together, even though they do share that common weakness of electricity. Next up, we have Reuniclus. I think Reuniclus will be very uh, troublesome for us if it comes uh, on paper. It's like, why would you bring Reuniclus against my team? Like, there's Obstagoon, there's Dragapult. Like, why? Well, you guys, I actually think an Assault Vest uh, Regenerator Reuniclus would actually be a uh, freaking amazing against my team. Dragapult is doing less than half with that, with the set I'm running. And um, he could just as easily just run a Calm Mind variant. If he brings out Reuniclus when he's not looking at Obstagoon or Dragapult and sets up a Calm Mind um, on stuff like Nidoking, um then he's, he's actually pretty darn bulky, and uh, I definitely think AV Reuniclus would help his team switch into Nido King, which I think he's kind of lacking. I feel like if you look at his team, he's probably either going to need to bring an Assault Vest Scrafty or an Assault Vest Reuniclus to switch into Nido King, and I just think Reuniclus does it better because with Regenerator, it can heal itself a lot better than Scrafty with, like, let's say, Drain Punch. Uh, Scrafty's just not that fast, and Fighting Stab just isn't the best against my team. And then we have Wobbuffet. Oh, I skipped over Scrafty. So, yeah, that was pretty much my thought about Scrafty, though. Assault Vest, um, like, he could bring Dragon Dance, but, like, it's just not that great. Like, it's just not that great. I, I don't think Scrafty's that strong. Even with one Dragon Dance up, it's not going to one-shot stuff on our team. Uh, even, like, uh, my defensive Pokemon, like Serena and Sylveon, that both share Poison Weakness. Like, a plus-one Poison Jab is not killing those Pokemon. But... We're bringing the best team we think to take on this team this week, and we're going to start with Serena, uh, Impish, Queenly Majesty with Protective Pads. Now, Protective Pads will help us U-turn out against things like uh, Rocky Helmet Skarmory, as well as Flame Body Center Scorch, more so for the Skarmory. Can't even lie there. Um, but we got Triple Axle Power Whip Synthesis and U-turn, so... This is going to be our premier Zygarde switch in into Thousand Arrows. It's the only real solid Thousand Arrows switch in we have. And man, when well, I tell you this thing eats, it eats. We will be able to switch in from full. We take a plus 1,000 Arrows into 
a plus one outrage, which is kind of insane. Of course, we have to be at full health, so that might not come up, but you know, just to give you guys an idea of how bulky Serena is in front of Zygarde. Running triple axle, of course, for Zygarde. Uh, power whip, just for good stab. Um, it helps us deal with Primarina. Primarina can be a be a hindrance. Um, but also power whip is decent damage on stuff like Reuniclus, stuff like on Scrafty that might want to come in. I don't know. Um, you turn to uh, Synthesis to keep us healthy. Of course, we really need to keep this thing healthy. Um, because once Serena's gone, Zygarde is just a little bit more scary. Like... Um, yeah, but uh, you turn just to predict switches like that. I think if we're met with Zygarde lead versus Serena, I'm just going to click Triple Axel. And then if not, um, and then if he uh, switches out in the Skarmory, which I totally predict, um, we'll just U turn out. He might not predict that we have Triple Axel right out the gate. I don't know how good this guy is. I do know from his last match that he does make predictive switches, so. If he's got half a brain, he probably will switch into Skarmory on Serena. But with U-Turn, we will outspeed, uh, get the heck out of there. We have 12 EVs in speed just to prevent uh, speed creeps from stuff like Skarmory. I was thinking about it, and some of our sets this week were packing like just a few EVs in speed to like outspeed things. And um, I could definitely see a potential thing like that from Skarmory. So U-Turn will save us from catching potential Bright Birds. Even though I feel like we'll... Uh, eat them up you know what i'm saying i mean we're a pretty darn bulky uh serena we're bulkier than we were last week um the force bidef were just kind of there it was just leftover evs it didn't really it didn't fit into anything else um so we threw the four into spidef um the defense with the impish nature um of course is what's going to let us live that we have extra attack evs um figure those could probably come into to use make us a little bit stronger we just didn't really need them all into hp and defense this week and um then yeah some uh evs and hp well, that's pretty much it for serena um she's just met soga pits this week and we move on so our next bulky pokemon we have sylveon uh, timid pixelate with leftovers so i really like sylveon this week this is basically what we're using to tank uh, outrageous from Zygarde if he gets too crazy. Uh, but Sylveon takes any hit, smacks it with Hyper Voice. Uh, we're not too afraid of Zygarde this week. We're bringing defensive checks to it as well as pretty much everything on my team has ice type coverage. It's kind of insane. But we got max HP, 232 defense, just to make this as bulky on the physical side as we can. Just because uh, base 130 Spadef kind of makes up for the Spadef, so. Uh, we can throw EVs into defense more often than not. We got four special attack just because it didn't fit anywhere else. We got uh, 20 speed timid. It lets us out speed stuff like Skarm. Um, the reason that's important is so we can baton pass on Skarm. That's really all we could do. Like I know I could pack Mystical Fire, but at the end of the day, I just don't think it's too worth it. Like um, I mean, if you're not doing like, it's the same thing with Corviknight, right? Like, a Corviknight with leftovers, if you're not doing over 56%, does, is it really damage at the end of the day? Because it can just roost off, um, you know. But being faster than Skarm is going to help us baton pass on it if he thinks he can bring it in versus Sylveon and get a free roost. And then maybe he's on just, like, a few percent. Uh, we can get that kill with Hyper Voice, which would be pretty interesting. Which are pretty good for us, actually. But, um... Overall, Hyper Voice, just uh, good uh, hits all around. Um, it's going to smack the hell out of Skarmory. Um, it's going to blow Zygarde away. Um, you know, stuff like that could be very... Yeah, yeah, yeah it could be useful. Um, but yeah, overall, when, uh, with the Baton Pass pivoting over Mystical Fire. So, that's just about it. You know what this thing does. Um, I can use this to pass Wishes into other Pokemon on my team, like Nidoking and Snorlax. Yeah. That's Sylveon for you. Next up, we have Nidoking. Modest Sheer Force Life Orb. Now, I really hope this thing gets to hit the field this week. <laughs> it didn't even get to come out last week, but uh, that's definitely going to be the case this week, I feel, uh, with stuff like Skarmory. So, running max HP, because we really don't need to be faster than anything. Um, we outspeed stuff like Skarm naturally. 
Uh, we outspeed Prim naturally. We outspeed Reuniclus, Scar uh, Scrafty, Scorch, Glaceon, uh, Wobbuffet. We outspeed all that stuff naturally. So we, we don't need the speed. Like, a lot of those Pokemon don't want to run speed. Um, the only Pokemon on this team that would want to run speed are like Roserade, Zygarde, and Spectrae. And guess what? They already outspeed us. So there's really no point in us even running speed unless we were like Scarfed or something. But personally, I really like the Sheer Force Life Orb set. I feel like it can really smack things up. We have a lot of special attack with Sheer Force, Sheer Force and Life Orb. Uh, we're running Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Sludge Wave, and Taco Spikes. So really good damage all around. Um, this is going to be a good uh, Skarmory pivot for us. We can pivot it on Skarmory. Um, if he's anything besides Brave Bird, it just, we just don't care. <laughs> like, we really just don't care. And uh, at the end of the day, we can always uh, pass Wishes into it um, to heal it back up if it does end up taking too much damage. But Flamethrower is great because it hits uh, Roserade Skarm. Um, he probably doesn't want to switch in. He probably doesn't want to stay in with with Skarm versus this, of course. Um, so we are packing Ice Beam for some nice damage on Zygarde that might want to switch into a Flamethrower or a Thunderbolt. And um, Ice Beam, of course, our big way to hit Zygarde. Um, Sludge Wave for Prim. Going to be some nice stab there. Uh, it's going to hit everything decently well. Um, you know, things like things that are going to scare us out are Roserade because we don't want to take an extra Sensory. I think we live one. We probably live like a scarf extra sensory with max HP, uh, but I don't want to take it if I don't have to. Uh, Spectre A is going to scare us out just because it's strong. It's really strong. It's really fast. I don't really expect Spectre A to come, but, but we'll see. I just have too much stuff for it. I don't think it really comes here. Um, Zygarde, of course, scares me out if it's uh, on the hard switch from Skarm into Zygarde, which is an important thing that I have Ice Beam for. Um, you're probably going to see me fire off Ice Beams into Skarm because I want to catch the Zygarde on the Switch. Um, but yeah, if AV Reuniclus doesn't come, this Pokemon is a big problem for him, so I definitely want to get it in as much as possible. Um, unfortunately, this is a Pokemon that can get trapped by Wobbuffet, so it is what it is. Um, we have Toxic Spikes. Um, if we do enough predicting, we might be able to stall out his Miracoats. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of that exchange, if Boba Fett actually does manage to kill Nido King, we'll at least have two layers of Toxic Spikes up, which is good. Um, it forces uh, Roserade to come out. It forces Skarm to defog. Um, so it's it's uh, decent overall. Um, I think Nido King can really put in a lot of work this week. Um, you know, we don't really fear too much from his team with Nido King, so that's pretty dope. All right, moving on. We have the big boy Snorlax making his debut this week. Um, girth moment, impish immunity with Chesto Berry, so this Pokemon is our all-around Spectre switch in. He, this thing does not care. Uh, Spectre is going to have to set up some nasty plots versus me, and uh, even at like plus two, like we still are eating hits very well. Um, Curse, just because he shouldn't want to switch in on me so we can throw up curses. Um, if Snorlax gets set up with curses, um, it's going to be very hard for him to take us down. Uh, I don't see Snorlax sweeping, but uh, the only thing that really like stop us is Skarm. If we have curses set up, um, everything else kind of has to sack itself up while it weakens us down and then leave us open for something like uh, Primarina to, co to come in and hit us. Uh, really hard with a surf, hydro pump, moon blast, whatever have you. Body slam, ice punches our coverage this week with curse and rest in the back, resto chesto. Um, ice punch hits Zygarde, it hits Roserade, uh, it hits everything decently. Um, it's going to hit Spectre for good damage. Spectre is not bulky at all, so we don't exactly need a dark. Like, I did have Darkest Lariat before. Um, Darkest Lariat and Ice Punch, but I thought uh, I, Body Slam was just a lot better because I don't, because if you ask me, like, Snorlax was, is much better to sit in in front of Spectre than it is Primarina. Um, Primarina can hit us really hard and wear us down, um, even with just, like, max special attack. It's very strong, and with Darkest Lariat Ice Punch, we literally wouldn't be able to touch Prim. That'd kind of be a big issue, um, but 
uh, Ice Punch into a Spectre A is always good damage, um, especially if we have like an attack boost. It'll be delicious damage. Um, and we could always get like a Hax Freeze or something like that. It is what it is. Um, obviously, we can't really beat Skarm. Um, if it came down to it, we could with a little bit of luck. Obviously, Body Slam with the Parachance or Ice Punch able to freeze Skarm. I feel like I would probably go for Ice Punch uh, against Skarm. Absolutely. Um, we don't lose hard to any set that besides the Iron Defense Skarm set. So, if he's just raw Body Press, um, it's just kind of like a standoff between me and him until I freeze him or he crits me. Uh, one of the two. And, um, you know, it's it's a good mod. I really like Snorlax for this matchup. If you don't have a strong fighting presence on your team, that's kind of where Snorlax shines through, in my opinion. Um, it's a decent... So, it will take hits decently from all the special attackers on his team. Reuniclus, Glaceon, you know, we don't really care. That's why I was saying, like, Glaceon can come and it can hit but snorlax can pretty much take hits from it really well so can glaceon to be honest um it's just you know if we get froze or not which i really would hate it'd be very unfortunate we catch a freeze um but it is what it is it's pokemon and to be honest with snorlax we are going to be requiring a little bit of luck to uh have this pokemon put in work this week but yeah that's one of our main counters to spectre Another counter to Spectre we have is the Obstagoon. So we're bringing Logo, Lobo back again. Jolly Guts, Flame Orb. Uh, this week we're walk, rocking Facade, Knock Off, Ice Punch, and Obstruct. So Ice Punch, of course, for Zygarde once again. Uh, knock Off and Facade just to hit stuff really, really, really hard. And uh, Obstruct just because I was kind of bummed that I couldn't just get my Flame Orb uh, last week. Um, so that was a little bit unfortunate uh, just because we kind of like were... Like, like, we had the game one, but then we had to see, like, me hit Facade, like, five times on a Landorus, and it was just kind of boring, so. We got the Obstruct this week. Um, Obstruct is going to be really good, because it's going to let us scout on stuff, uh, which I think could be really, really good, depending. Um, this is a really good, uh, in my opinion, is a great switch into Reuniclus, and it's a good switch into Spectre A. Uh, Spectre A's biggest way to hit this is, like, Uproar. Which I don't really think he'll bring because, you know, Dragapult. Like, I don't think you bring Uproar. It's very scary. Um, but we eat Dark Pulses. We eat Shadow Balls. We don't care <laughs> um, too much about Spectre A. Um, and then we fire off huge knockoffs. And anything on his team is going to take knockoffs hard. Prim does not have the best, special, the best defense. It's going to take a lot from knockoff, and I don't have, like, the calc right in front of me, but I would imagine a knockoff into a facade is very, very close to killing Primarina. So, Lobo can definitely throw in some work this week. Um, it's a good switch into Reuniclus just because we don't care about Psychics, we don't care about Shadow Ball, which I imagine it will pack if it comes because it needs a way to hit Dragapult. And then uh, it's pretty much the only way to hit me is Focus Blast, and... You know, obstruct. I can uh, fish for it. Um, you know, we can we can dodge. Like he has to hit us. He has to hit us. There's there's like no way out of it for him. He needs to hit us with a focus blast, um, and he's got to catch us on the switch in with it. So it's kind of a tall order um, for Reuniclus because he's got to like spam a focus blast um, randomly in front of something that's not Obstagoon to catch Obstagoon with it. And we have stuff like Nidoking and Dragapult and Sylveon that don't care about Focus Blast. So it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's going to take a, we probably won't be going for it. Uh, let's be real here. Uh, but obviously going to be really strong. It's our one of our fastest members on our team. All in all, I think it's a really good Pokemon this week. Um, it hits everything decently hard. Moving on into, lastly, our Dragapult. We have Hasty Infiltrator with Expert Belt. I didn't want to go Specs this week. Um, you look at his team, and he pretty much has switch-ins for Shadow Ball, Draco Meteor, and Thunderbolt everywhere. Um, he doesn't have the best switch-ins to, to Shadow Ball. Like I said, it's pretty much AV Reuniclus or AV Scrafty for, that, for stuff like that. Um, however, um, I wanted to be able to switch my moves. Um, U-Turn is great. Uh, 92 attack EVs into 
attack there, we have full special attack, we have timid 164, so we outspeed timid spectre A. That's all we need to outspeed. Um, you know, and then Shadow Ball is just, it's so good. It's so good spammable. We can bring this thing in on Skarmory and unlike the Body Press into like Nido King or Snorlax, Body Press does zero damage against Dragapult. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, Thunderbolt would do great damage. Um, you know, we're probably going to be clicking Shadow Ball versus Skarm because uh, since we are rocking Thunderbolt, uh, to hit stuff like Primarina as well, um, it will not hit Zygarde. So I don't imagine he'll run a Scarf Zygarde, but it, it could come out. That's why I'm kind of like, yeah. But we have switch into the Zygarde all day. We've covered that already. Um, U-Turn will actually do more damage to an Assault Vest Reuniclus than Shadow Ball will, which is kind of crazy. I think uh, Shadow Ball is like... 36 to 43 something like that and u-turn does half like clean half like it's like 47 to 55 something crazy like that so um versus reuniclus if we don't know what set it is we're absolutely just going to u-turn out we hit the calm mind set with that we hit the ab set with it for a clean half overall it's good damage and i feel like he's going to be pressured to attack dragapult while he's in front of us which could open up into the obstacle switch fantastic there but um you know dragapult really strong um he hits pretty much everything on his team nothing likes shadow ball um draco meteor isn't the most spammable while primarina is around uh skarmory as well uh not to mention we don't really want to be lowering our special attack because he could uh, find openings for Calm Mind Primarina or something like Calm Mind Reuniclus to actually come in and be a little bit of an issue. Um, overall, though, I think we're looking decent this this uh, this week. Um, I think we have more of an advantage uh, just based on like the team matchup, but I do think he has a great chance to win. Um, I have played like a few mock battles against this team and assault vest reuniclus can be super annoying just pivoting out getting its hp back it doesn't matter if i toxic that thing it just gets it back you know it's regenerator is so 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 annoying um and yeah he has a good amount of pivot on his team like it, it's it's a decent team is it the best i, I don't know it's kind of ramshackle towards the bottom just because um I think he went a little bit top heavy. I feel like Zygarde, Spectre, and Skarm are pretty expensive picks. Um, but towards the bottom, I mean, Wobbuffet's there. I mean, it's always going to scare you um, whenever it comes. Uh, Glaceon is kind of meh. Um, Scorch is kind of meh, just because it's probably going to be boots all the time. Um, but yeah, that's it for us. Uh, hopefully we can get a dub in week two versus the Chicago Phalanx, and uh, I'll be right back with the battle. Later, guys. So, no Reuniclus, which is fire. He has Zygarde, Horse, Scraff, T, Horse, Prim. Skarmory and Rose. So good thing we don't see Reuniclus here. Uh, like I said, it looked bad on paper. So judging from all this, we could just lead Serena. I think I'm gonna do that. Um, he could lead Skarm. Um, but Serena is our best lead in case he leads Zygarde, which I am definitely afraid of. Already told him good luck, have fun. So let's get right into the match. Let's see. I don't really have much else to say. Other than this game's literally going to be hard, but we're going to do our best. No Glaceon, which is cool. Okay, what's he going to lead? What's he going to lead? 
So that's Skarmory. That's fine. Solid lead. So I'm expecting him to spike or Braid Bird here. Um, I actually didn't even check to see how much Braid Bird does to like Neo King or anything. Hopefully it's a 3 hit KO. I would expect so. Ish. Yeah, it is. Alright, so we go hard Neato King. Expecting him to set up uh, some hazards here. We're gonna go hard because we U turn's not gonna do anything to this, and we don't wanna reveal our protective paths yet if he is a uh, Rocky Helmet, which I'm expecting him to be. So we'd switch out first anyway. I'm gonna see what he wants to do. The beast hits the field. He could just braver it off rip. He body presses, that's fine. So he just body press, that's great. That did no damage. Alright, then seeing what could come in, I think we're just gonna ice beam raw. I don't think he stays in here. I'm gonna ice beam expecting Zygarde to come in. Um realistically, Scrafty's probably the move here, but we'll see what he wants to do. If he goes Scrafty, I think our play is to hard out into Oh, Prim. Hard out into Sylveon. Doesn't matter. Alright, so Prim. Versus Nita King Sludge Wave should kill, so I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. He could have a resist berry. If he does, he got me, but I wanna kill this thing right now. You are faster. Does Sludge Wave knock it out? That's the question. It lives on a sliver. Holy crap. It's Citrus Berry. He flip turns. Great. Awesome. So we get our damage on that, and Nido King stays alive. I thought that was going to cost us Nido King right there. Zygarde can come in here, but we can switch out on some. We can switch out into. Serena expecting the thousand arrows. Man, he lived that on a sliver. So he's got to have some spit F. That was the only way he took that. So yeah, he was probably like full spit F, um, which is good. That means he doesn't have attack most likely, unless he's like assault vest prim, which would could it could be a, it could be a thing. So this comes out. Um, do I want to go Hard Goon? Um, he does have Dazzling Gleam. I'm going to go Hard Goon, predicting the Psychic move to come out, and then I'm going to click Obstruct to Scout for the Scarf. We're playing a little bit more offensive here. He just Giga Drains. Jeez, I did a lot. He lost some HP. So he's life orbed. I think that means we're faster than this. Yeah, we are faster. So I want to know if Facade kills. Um, Goonie and a Roserade. Yeah, Facade always kills. Um, knock off would do a ton too. I'm gonna knock off. Let's cover the Spectre A switch. I don't expect it comes in. I probably should have facaded, but we get a knockoff if he wants to switch into anything like Scrafty, possibly. So the Skarmory comes out. That's fine, too. We get some nice knockoff damage on that. Ooh, that did a lot. There's Rocky Helmet goes by. I really thought Guts canceled out the damage from Flame Orb. I guess it doesn't. Um, dang, man. I'm not hard out into... Let's go Dragapult this time. I'm a hard out into Dragapult. He could Roost, he could Body Press. Either one is fine for Pult. That's fine. So we switched into Prim expecting Flamethrower from Nido King earlier. So if he expects me to attack, 
now um we could just go shadow ball we get good damage on anything Zygarde, whatever. That's good damage. We get the Spideff drop, so Thunderbolt will kill after. He's got little Night Slash. I don't think that kills us. No. It's fine. I think we just Thunderbolt. He might think we don't. we're uh, Specs here. So I'm going to reveal that we're not and kill him immediately. See what he decides to do here. Hopefully he just stays in and loses this. I'm pretty sure we do enough to like fully spideff. Uh it's it's 59 to 70. Um so I mean we have a good shot at it. I mean that's if he's fully spideff. Um but night we know Night Slash isn't gonna kill us. He does not go Zygarde here, so this is this down. Thunderbolt, goodbye. So Prim's gone. Skarm, no item. Um, Rose is life orb. That's great. That means we always outspeed with Pulse. Fantastic. We'll see what he wants to do here. If he goes Zygarde, we go Serena. If he goes Horse, we go Lax. He's really thinking. I imagine I put him into a tough spot. So Goldoa is here. So I absolutely just go out into Snorlax here. Um, yeah, because I save Obstagoon for the... Uh, just the sack. Obstagoon's too low to try to risk right now. So Shadow Ball comes out. Straight Shadow Ball. Alright, so I think I just get my curse here. Well, Skarmory's still alive. Um, I could just swap right back into Nidoking, expecting... It's too risky. I'm going to Ice Punch. Just raw Ice Punch. We get uh, some damage off on Skarmory. Moist. The Scrafty makes sense, makes sense. So this was to switch into me. So we'll get a little bit of chip here. Oh, and I do mean a little. Lefties. Lefties Scrafty. Lefties. Um, I go out into Sylveon here. I feel like Sylveon eats a poison jab from this thing all day. Sylv. Where's my Sylveon? What the heck? Yeah. We eat, even if he uh, predicts it. Which means we will live anything if he goes for a Dragon Dance right now. If he's Iron Head, he could flinch, would suck, but. That doesn't cover, um, doesn't cover Serena. So we do lose our leftovers there. It's unfortunate. Um, he should not want to stay in here. Like, he should not want to stay in here. Um, imagining he goes Skarm, I'm going to pop up a Wish to try to pass an Anito King. Or, uh... Dragapult. Dragapult might be better. Because his Spectre and his Zygarde can't be scar both Scarf, so I can outspeed one of them for sure. Whereas Nido King doesn't take either one of them down unless it's on Switch In. He could go for Poison Jab if he doesn't know how much the damage is, but I imagine he is Calking. Um, we'll see what he wants to do. Life Orb, no item, lefties. We haven't seen anything on the horse, um, but I assume it's scarfed in some way. Yeah, this comes out fantastic, fantastic. And I do believe we outspeed. 
timid. Yeah, we come in at 91 speed, so unless he's uh, speed crap for something, uh, it doesn't matter. We can just go out into Night Fury pretty safe here. We don't have to baton pass. I guess we could, but I don't think he doubles. So he could Night Slash here, but like we'll get a lot of HP back. He just body presses, that's fine. So we're gonna get back up to full. Fantastic, fantastic. And looking at his team, we can just Shadow Ball Raw or we could Thunderbolt. Does he have a fairy? He doesn't. Brings in Zygarde, I think we're still fine. I'm just on Thunderbolt Raw. Cause this is gone. So he, do, he does go, so that's fine, that's cool. Yo, that's the Zygarde. So we could have got some Shadow Ball damage there, which is unfortunate. But we're about to get information on this thing. So, seeing if this wants to attack me, I will go Sylveon. He could have the rare Iron Tail. And if he does, like, GG there. <laughs> What you got for me, dog? Thousand arrows. He doubles out. That's fine. Back in the lion. That's fine. That's actually perfectly fine. So we'll just wish again. Like, dude, even if you have Iron Head, I'm not too afraid of it with Sylveon here. Um, I don't mind passing another wish out into something else. That also comes in the Rose Raid. Um, so we predict the Poison move. We predict the Poison move, the Beast is the play. Now, Snorlax is, is safer. I might just start cursing up on him. So we'll take the sludge bomb and get the wish off. So whatever this does, it this does will uh, heal back up. Dazzling gleam. Trying to predict Pult. I would have gone Nido King if anything. That's fine there. I'm gonna curse up, expecting Scrafty to come in here. Sleep powder? How dare you? That's fine. Cause we're gonna Chesto Berry. Uh. So we lose our berry there, which is unfortunate. Um, but we definitely just ice punch here. I'm pretty sure like he could miss, and we're at plus one attack now. Yeah, I freaking ice punch, dude. This will kill him if he misses. Go ahead and miss, bro. Oh, I'm for it. I'm for it. So that's unfortunate. We are at plus one defense. Um, but I just keep ice punching. This play is probably to go Skarm here. But I'm trying to burn some sleep. Okay. Scrafty. Drain Punch does not do a lot to us. Um, I'm going to... So we're back at neutral now. I don't have Body Slam in the Calc. We just Body Slam. It'll do a good chunk. I hope. I just want to like burn turns, bulk up. That's fine. It's fine. We burn another turn, and then I'm pretty sure we go. I think we burn another turn here. Call me crazy. Does Sylveon live any hit from this? Sylveon. 
Hyper Voice actually doesn't kill, which is wild. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch Hard Sylveon now. Plus one Poison Jab won't kill us. He should outspeed. So he burnt two turns, two, two sleep turns, so he probably uh, wake up soon. So yeah, he just drain punches because, yeah. <laughs> Um, I just hyper voice here. He can go out into Scarm, but he has to switch out if he does that. Um, and then I can go back into Pult. Like, like Snorlax being asleep still deals with Spectria. And that's just dead. Sweet. I don't know why that didn't kill in the calcs. Oh, because I had him calc up for Roselli Berry. So... His way to kill Lax is really gone, and that was really his only Shadow Ball switch in as well. Yell comes out. So we have enough HP. We're definitely going to Hyper Voice this thing. Um, I do believe at 132 we live the Thousand Arrows, even from Banded. Let me check. I really hope so. Um, yeah, he's got to have... Yeah, he's got to crit us or have iron, or hit an Iron Tail right now. Iron Tail! Ah, uh, he got me. Oh, but we live. Holy crap. Okay, you're not choice banned. That's for darn sure. That's a ton of damage. No weakness policy. Fantastic. So predicting another Iron Tail. We just let him kill me. Um, like, what do we need this for? Nothing. We need it for nothing. It does nothing. Thank you, Sylveon. You're the best, dude. It's fine, dude. So he's not banded, so I go Serena right now. Go out into... Oh, he's not Scarf either. So the, the offensive play is to go Dragapult. And we fire off Shadow Ball for free. Literally free. Oh, so that's awesome. So he reveals that he's not scarfed. So Spectre is probably scarfed. What? We DC'd? What happened? What happened? Oh, come on. Alright, guys. We're back after recreating that match. We unfortunately had a DC. And um, I'm going to stick with my plans and uh, go Serena here. So Serena lives any hit. Um, seeing Skarm. Um, I think I'm fine triple axling here. I don't lose much by it. Like, he goes Skarm, but, like, um, Pult's at 100, man. <laughs> Pult has no damage on it. We're looking really good with, uh, with uh, Zygarde getting extremely low here oh and for it it's fine we miss i'm gonna u-turn um we already know night slash doesn't do anything it could crit me though it could crit me and i don't have wish support anymore um yeah i think pulse to play just please don't crit he roosts that's fine so we Thunderbolt here because we know that the um, Zygarde is not Scarfed. Okay, he does not crit. And then we click Thunderbolt again. Hands down. Um, actually, let me calc Shadow Ball into this Skarmory. Um, Skarm. Pult. I mean, Thunderbolt did nothing, basically. I think I have to Thunderbolt again, yeah. Just in case he, like, hard went to Roserade. Yeah, so this is here. Um, we go... We go Snorlax all day. I thought this was a sleep. Oh, well. Um... This was asleep. So he agility, which is crazy. Uh, I was asleep. I'm gonna let it ride. Or not. I can rest. Uh, 
Uh, we were, I was asleep originally, so in the recreation we woke up. I'm just asleep for a million turns, that's the only problem. Oh. Let's just say I woke up because you got a free plot there. Because I burnt two turns in game. So it's like I woke up this turn. Sweet. So we ice punch for sure. This thing is annoying. Um, so he can mess me up with dark punch, dark pulses. He has hyper beam. What? <laughs> That's cool. So he kills me with hi the hyper beam tech. That's friggin' awesome. But I go out into Lobo and click knock off 1 billion percent here. Yeah. Sheesh, that was cool. Nice tech. So shout out to him for having the hyper beam tech. Um, I thought he would be uproar, but that was like way worse because Dragapult um, doesn't care. Um, but, like, he still didn't have, like... Like, he would have had the Hyper Beam versus Obstagoon, so... Um, I'm pretty sure I just knock off again or Ice Punch. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, so we do... We might have won a Speed Tie right there. Um, it depends, but we were Jolly. Um, I just Ice Punch this. And that's game. So, wow, really quick one there. So, that's the Chicago Phalanx. We are at 2-0. Shout out to Godbear. Um, he was a really good sport. Um, I don't know who DC'd personally, um, but it's all good. Um, so we'll see you guys for next week in the SBC. Later.